Scotty T Sports Experience presents the SNM Show. Can you handle it? All right, what's going on, Mike? How are we doing today? It's all living the dream, bud. A little better than you, it sounds like. Yeah, busy day, busy day. Went and did a drug test for work. Got that all taken care of, you know, a bunch of stuff going on. But it's a good day. It's a good day, let me tell you. Football Tuesday is always good, man. Oh, absolutely. Uh, hey, we got the uh, the update. You said, hey, that football game may play tonight. Well, that's wrong. They're playing on Wednesday at 3.40 Eastern time. So that maybe. should be a blast. Yeah, maybe, right? I, You know, well, I... I just I'm feel a like excited should, about it. I am too. Yeah, I'm a little I excited to watch uh, some lunch and some NFL football on a Wednesday. Like, right. Well, yeah. It, it would be lunch for you at that time. I mean, it'd be yeah. about two forty my time. Well, we'll yeah. be doing a show at that time. Just about. No. Yeah, yeah we'll probably be done. You actually be going to pick up your kid. Yep. At that time. Well. I just I'm shocked by that, but we got a lot of stuff to talk about. Short time to do it, probably about a half hour show. Mike's got to get going to get the kid. We started off really late. My apologies, but hey, we're here now. So with that Raven Steelers game moving to tomorrow, hopefully, uh, Washington and the Steelers will play on Monday night instead of Sunday night. Got double header Monday night. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I do want to apologize now for the noise, if you can hear it. We have people working on the the house. Nothing I can do about it. Didn't know about it. Hey, what are you going to do? Uh, yeah, so there's that. Uh, also, uh, I guess Will Fuller, he announced on Instagram that he was suspended six games for violating substance, the, the policy, I guess. Yeah, now, I'm glad, now I'm glad Green Bay didn't go after him, because that would have been bad. He's out uh, week one of next year, too. And he's a free agent uh, after this year. He's not even on the Texans lineup now. Yeah, he just screwed I, that up. Yeah. I, mean, I don't think they're making the playoffs, obviously, but no, that's, that's just a shame. He's their best wide receiver now that you lost yeah. Hopkins. It's... They uh, they released Kenny Stills the week before, too, so now they're all of a sudden real thin on, on wide receivers. That's, you got Randall Cobb. He's suffering from, like, a turf toe or some kind of thing going on. He, He's always hurt. Ever since he left Green Bay, he's hurt. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's getting older now, too. I'm glad Green Bay got rid of him. Yeah. So, before we get into the games, there's a couple more things I thought that were worthy of covering. And uh, this one I found hilarious. So, Saturday night, the Denver Broncos wanted their offensive quality control coach named Rob Calabrese to be their starting quarterback on Sunday versus the Saints. But the league refused it because they don't want teams putting per, uh, potential players on their coaching staffs. I just thought it was hilarious because they said, this is what they said. They said, well, you know, he knows the offense, so we want him to start. Do you really think they would have got away with that? Yeah, that, that just opens a whole can of worms if you try something like oh, that. Absolutely. So I mean, you're going you're gonna to start making up coaching positions just to throw an extra player on then. And then how do you handle all that? How do you prove right. That he's not a real player or not a real coach. I mean, like that's yeah. just. Well, and you already got the uh, practice squad, so they brought up yeah. that guy to be the starter, which I mean they got blown out horrible. We'll talk about that, but I, I just can't believe it. And I also want to get your thoughts on the Lions firing Matt Patricia and their GM. Um, my thoughts are that it looks like a great spot for Harbaugh. <laughs> Doesn't have to relocate; he stays inside his Michigan roots. Yeah. Do you think they'll they'll bring him on? I think it'd be a good call for him. Yeah, I mean it, it all makes sense, but usually what makes sense doesn't happen. <laughs> right. See, you as, you far as, something out and... as far as I know, what Golick was talking about Saturday, he said there's a lot of teams that would love Harbaugh, but then yeah, I'm getting mixed both. reports where they don't want him or nobody's interested. But that could be just because they're in the middle of a season as well. Yeah, there's like tampering rules with that too. Like, I'm not sure exactly how that all works out, but yeah. Well, you need to be, you know, informed on that, Mike. What are we doing here? All right, I'll get back to you. Yeah, absolutely. 
you know, I think I think it's about time. To be honest with you, the Lions, they should have fired this guy a long time ago. He was, I mean, he's a defensive guru, but I don't think he's a head coach material. If he's a defensive coordinator, different story. And their defense didn't even play that good. Yeah, that's very true. When you got Matthew Stafford, probably he's close to one of the best in the league. He is one of the best. You you got to put him there. He's always he plays phenomenally, but he has no help. His wide receivers, Calvin Johnson, retired on him. Mm-hmm. They don't have an offensive line. They don't have their defense was good, and I don't know what happened to him. It's well, they traded away Darius Slay too, who did get burnt last night by DK, but. Like, he was oh, a staple on the defense. Right. I mean, the only one that's not getting beat by him is uh, Ramsey. Jalen yeah. Ramsey. Uh, you know, it's just – it's about – their offensive playbook was ridiculous. I mean, they should have won. I, I don't know. I shouldn't say that. They should have played a lot better on Thursday. They had a lot of great play calls, but not execution. Well, it's, it's the same. It's turnovers. It seems to always come down to turnovers with them, too. They can't hold on to that ball. The, the most no. important thing in a football game is that, that, that oval-shaped leather thing. And if you keep it, right. you have a better chance of winning. But if you're just going to give it away, then it's not going to work out. Right, exactly. I mean, you could say that for a lot of teams. I mean, you, you can say that, say that for college. You look at a couple of weeks ago, Oklahoma State and uh, Texas. Oklahoma State should have won that game. If you look at the Fox score, there's no way Oklahoma State loses that game. They even had a chance to win it with five turnovers. So, yeah, you don't you turn the ball over. That's uh, not looking good for you. Yeah, it was Wisconsin too. That yeah. same week, I think. Yeah, ridiculous Wisconsin, I tell you. Well, looking at some of these scores uh, from week twelve. So the Thursday games, yeah, like the Texans just destroyed the Lions, and that led the old Maddie Patricia probably heading back to New England. I wonder if they'll take them back. That's where they all seem to go. All the protégés seem to end up back in New England, and then they'll get another shot later. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. I mean, I saw that trick play the Lions had. It was – he threw it over to the one guy or handed it off, and he ran over, and then Stafford was by the goal line, and that running back put it perfectly in between two defenders. <laughs> but when Stafford was going down, he got hit, and the ball came out. I mean, what what do you got to lose? And that, that yeah, probably ended up something. Fired. Yeah. Yeah. Well, another game, Washington just destroyed the Cowboys. And, you know, I wonder where the Cowboy fans are now. I haven't heard from them for a while now. I heard from them when they, beat the Vikings. Yeah, when they beat the Vikings. Oh, yeah. And then, what, did they barely beat the Vikings? Let's see. Uh, they, you they watched. Beat us. You yeah. watched. I mean, they barely beat us, but they beat us in a lot of aspects of the game. Right, but they only won by three. Yeah. So they beat the Vikings by three, which is an under 500 team, but then you lose to Washington bad at home. Well, I'm, I'm, so tough happy. In division, but yeah. I'm so happy for uh, Alex Smith. Oh, yeah, me too. That was hands actually the down. best part of my Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, hand, besides the stuffing, that was the best. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, I mean, I mean, makes a pretty good gravy too. That's oh, my wife, you drink. know, my wife makes really good food, but she messed up on the gravy this year. She added a little too much salt. Oh, uh, well, because she added, she made it from the grit from the turkey, all the stuff from the turkey, and then it it just came right. out. And she added more salt. I'm like, oh god, but it was well, so. How much good. is it to get a divorce? Because that's probably well, about divorce worthy, right? It's close. It's close. <laughs> Well, I know uh, here you can get uh, two two fifty with kids. Oh, nice with kids, <coughs> and then like a hundred and fifty without kids or something like that. But I'm gonna write that down. Thank you for yeah, that. Well, you're in Nevada. I don't know about you know, Nevada. Yeah, move out, move to Oklahoma for like a month. Yeah, there you go. <coughs> Dang it! So the Bills beat the Chargers. Not really surprised by that, but I, I did want to Herbert though. What happened to him? I didn't even well, say. Well, he's that. just he's he's throwing the ball so well, and he's just he just can't buy a win. They 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 lose every game by one possession. It's not like they're getting blown out. They're in every single game. They have a chance to win almost every single game, and they just drop the ball. You know, he's probably 
besides Tua, I think he's probably the best rookie so far. I mean, Burrow had – he was playing great. I'm talking about quarterback. Yeah, I'm talking about Herbert as being the best quarterback rookie by far. think so. The numbers he's thrown up are, like, almost record-worthy. If he keeps this up, he's going to break records as a rookie. Hey, he's, I mean, he's playing great. I mean – And Tua's doing exactly what everybody thought, getting hurt. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, messed up his thumb. I thought it'd be yeah. his tip, to be honest with you, but I guess it wasn't. Uh, I don't know if he's playing this week, but you got Fitz Magic that just takes over the the helm and does what he does. Yeah. That's always good. Uh, Titans destroyed the Colts. Did you watch that game at all? Did you no, see I didn't any? watch any of that one. They had, uh, after the Browns and Jacksonville game, they had, uh, it was like, a little over two minutes left. Colts were kicking an onside kick. They kicked it. It bounced, and A.J. Brown caught the ball midair and ran it back. Oh, yeah. I saw the highlights on that, though. Oh, <laughs> my. I was like, oh, no. So, it was yeah, like it got, parted like the Red Sea, and I just got a touch on it. Oh, yeah, it was – I mean, the ball just fell right where nobody was. It was yep. amazing. So, the Colts, they drop. They're still in the playoff, you know, hunt. I think they're first or second. I think they're in second. Uh, Tennessee just overtook them. Yeah, yeah, in the in the division. But I'm talking about the wild card. The Colts are second, oh, yeah. I believe. And the Browns are first. Yeah. At eight and three. Well, let's talk about you know, your your uh, favorite team, the Minnesota Vikings. Win by one point over the old Carolina Panthers. I didn't that watch was that a game. game. Was it? There was a the only thing that got me the most. I mean, when Kirk doesn't throw the or turn the ball over, we seem to have a better shot at winning. But there was a field goal with like 11 minutes left in the fourth that was 100 percent not good, and they called it good. And there was no really? challenge or anything. And there's replays still that that ball did not <laughs> go over. Like For it was team? wide right. For the For Panthers? Carolina, really? Yeah. Well. But I mean, Carmen always plays itself out, and they missed the 54 yarder where they could have, uh, you know. It, yeah, but yeah, I I saw that. Well, I mean, Kurt, three hundred, three hundred and seven yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions, which, like you said, you don't turn the ball over. But Delvin Cook really, sixty-one yards. I mean, that's kind of the new normal now for running backs well, in the NFL. He uh, fumbled and hurt his ankle. They had to carry him off the field, and then he Ooh. came back and he was more of a distraction. He ran it maybe once after he got hurt, but he was just more of a decoy out there. So that's, you know, limited to the yards. But I was impressed with Kurt how he could come back and do a final drive for once, a game-winning drive with all the pressure and do it without Adam Thielen, too. Adam Thielen had COVID. I know. He's out for, what, this week? Maybe this week, too? I don't know. I think he should be back. We'll see, though. I haven't got an update. Hopefully. I wonder. I don't know. Yeah. It's crazy with the, the Vikings. They have. I had such high hopes for them this year. I still do. Well, I mean, we know Arizona's Arizona. slipping. They are. Arizona's slipping. They're slipping. Now right. there's, there's, they're six and five. Vikings are five and six right now. We're the top one. We're the next one in if uh, everybody keeps going the way they're going. But Minnesota does have to play Tampa and New Orleans week week seventeen. We play New Orleans. Oh. So Tampa my. with our young secondary and they have a you know a Pro Bowl receiver at every. Uh, Everywhere you look, that's going to we'll, be a little rough. We'll talk about them. They're, uh, we'll talk about them. I have some choice words about the Buccaneers. <laughs> but the Browns beat the Jags 27-25. That was a great game. Baker was – I thought Baker played extremely well. He, um, he just – Baker hasn't turned the ball over in four games either. If you, you let those rushers do their thing and you just take care of the ball – those Browns are a team to be, you know, watched. I, they're going to make the playoffs. I said it before the year started. Even with the whole COVID thing, not having a spring, not having a summer, I think they're going to make the playoffs. Now do I think they'll win it all? No, but I think they can get deep into the playoffs just because of that run game. That, and if well, Baker, Baltimore's falling off too. Oh, yeah. Baker is managing the game like he should. He's playing extremely well. He had 258 yards and two touchdowns, but no interceptions. So, I mean, he yeah. was managing. And then you look at Nick Chubb, just another 144 yards 
And then even that Kareem Hunt. That offense amazing. Oh. Like, it's so hard to stop. And then you got Kareem Hunt who can do anything. He can catch any ball like a receiver. Right. It's, he added 62 yards on the ground. So, it's to me, that is like the best two, one-two punch in all football. I, th- I think I've ever seen. I don't think I've seen a one-two punch like that. Like, they could both be pro bowlers. They could both get 1,000 yards this season. Like, that's right. yeah. mind-boggling. <laughs> well, we got – uh, passing some, NFL. We got some chat here. John Rubel's in here. Thanks for being here, John. He said Landry yak yards, though, and he did have a lot of yards after the catch. I mean, and some of them yeah. catches he pulled off were amazing. Well, yeah, he is a great receiver. He always gets shadowed by OBJ because they went to college together, and, you know. Yeah. OBJ is a freakish athlete. There's nothing. There's no way around that. But that Javaris Landry, if he gets the right system and he gets some balls at him, he ain't missing them. That's for sure. Yeah, and then uh, also John said the surprise is the D is finally strong after how many years of first round picks, and that is so true because, and they didn't have Miles Garrett for this fat past two games. I don't. Yep. I'm not even sure if he's coming back this week yet, but I think he is. But I mean, it they're flying around the ball. They were. It was amazing to watch that defense actually play well, and it's surprising to me to watch the uh, <laughs> the defense or even the offense in Cleveland actually play well and not get blown out all the time and have an eight and three record. Uh, it's... Well, you know what it is? They're they're playing with hope. That's something Cleveland hasn't had in years. Is exactly. a glimmer of hope. Well, so I, it's I fun think... for them to play. It's not depressing. And <laughs> oh, right. here we go again. Right, and I think with their coach too. I think they found a coach finally. Because Baker's had yeah. three different coaches in three years. Yeah. I mean, the fans did the same thing in Minnesota. Just ran the ball down your throat and uh, passed when you needed to out of play action. There we go with John with the Ohio State stuff. Denzel oh, Ward. Man. He go to Ohio State. Yeah, he did. He did. Yes, yes, he did. Where did Baker go? Huh? Where did Baker go? He went to Oklahoma. Where did he, what, did, what did he do? Planted that he flag in that field. And he won a Heisman and planted – the flag in the middle of that O. I remember that. I was – I tell you what, we're going to have a little story time because that was hilarious. When Baker did that, I stood up and I was like, yeah. I was so pumped up when he did that. Oh, you have no idea. Yeah. Yeah. It was funny. I mean, if you look at the Jags, though, Mike Glennon actually had a decent game. That's yeah, surprising. I thought they were just going to keep heading the Robinson the whole time. Well, Robinson, he had 100, 128 yards, average of yeah. 5.8 yards a carry. But Glennon with 235 yards and two TD passes, and he made some great throws. I couldn't – I mean, yeah. I don't know what they're going to do. I mean, is Justin Fields the guy that they're going to go after? Because you don't know what 100%. the Jets – You don't. we don't know what the Jets are going to do. Are they going to – if I'm the Jets, obviously they're going to pick number one. I don't. I don't even know if they're going to get a win this season. You're taking Lawrence if you're the Jets. You're you're going to be scrutinized and kicked out of the NFL if you don't take Trevor Lawrence with that number one pick. But see, and then here's the problem: they took Sam Darnold, who can't stay healthy for one. He gets sick all the time. It's probably because he's on the East Coast instead of the West Coast now. Different allergies or whatever the case. He had mono. He's out for like a month. So the guy. Well, can't stay healthy. There's a lot of teams. There's a lot of teams who want Darnold. I promise you. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's not like he's just. He's not like he's gonna go somewhere. But you can't pass up on Trevor Lawrence. He's no. been one of the t- most talked talked about prospects I can remember since Andrew Luck. Yeah, I mean, if you look at Darnold, I'm so glad that the Browns took Baker Mayfield number one instead of him. I think the Browns wouldn't be the team they are without Baker, in my opinion. Yeah, he brings a he brings some swag to that team too, some grittiness, you know. Darnold <laughs> is more of a quiet leader. John goes, I didn't like that flag planting. Oh, I, loved I loved it. It was so great. Then I uh, said Robinson is the new MJD. Reese Jones Drew, I can see that. That guy, yeah, is a sneaky decent running back. Yeah, I agree. I didn't, I didn't see it coming, but he I is, think, he's proven it. He's not just I mean, a, like a one-hit wonder. He's proven it. Right, and the best part is they got rid of uh, Fournette, who I think was a bust for sure. 
big time boss. Well, they and, overworked the hell out of him too. I mean, that that oh. guy got so many carries. They were yeah. like, "All right, we're not going to repay you. You are going to be a broken in a year and a half." And it's right. It it proved yeah proved no. to be a good decision. So now we're going to the Jets and the I mean the Giants and the Bengals. Uh, Giants get it done. They lead the NFC East, which I'm not surprised because that division is the weakest in the NFL, and it is really bad. Um, apparently Daniel Jones got hurt. Uh, they'll yeah, have long string. Yep. Uh, and then it was funny cause uh, I was watching a streamer and this guy goes, Hey, uh, you know, we're by the guy streamer is a big giants fan. And he said that, uh, something about oh, the giant. And I said, well, they won after, you know, after I watched the Packer game and, uh, I said they lead their division. And then he goes, uh, this one guy's like, well, they got Colt McCoy. And I'm like, and I laughed. I said, ha ha, what a joke, you know, that's funny. He's like, what's funny? You never had a chance, you know, anywhere. He's on, been on crap teams. I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, well, there's been a lot of guys that have been on crap teams but turned it around. I don't – Colt McCoy to me is a career backup. I think he can manage the game. He could get them into the playoffs. I don't think they'll win a playoff game. But, I mean, without – I think what – Arkley, it's what makes, tough. What makes the Giants decent is uh, Daniel Jones – threat to run like he's huh. busting out over 20 yard runs every other yeah. game and he trips and falls yeah and then, you know he does his typical giants thing and embarrassing it becomes embarrassing <laughs> but no his his uh Ooh. his dual threat action is really what makes the giants harder to uh you know pick up on defense Okay, we're going to have to take a break from this and hit the comments cuz John said something he said I seen your comment the other day on starting a franchise with a QB, everyone gave an a- gave answer. I'd go with Josh Allen. I don't agree. See, to me, you got to prove yourself a little bit more. I mean, if you look, if you go beyond stats, Josh Allen to me is not like a Watson. Watson is so dynamic. He can run the ball. He can throw the ball. He can lead your team. I don't think. I mean, I'm not saying Josh Allen ain't good. He's going to be good, but I don't think he's ready now. They're, the Texans were so poorly managed. They should have won playoff games, may even won the Super Bowl. They had how many great players, and they screwed it up by hiring Dan, o, uh, Dan O'Brien, right? Bill O'Brien. Bill O'Brien, yeah. See, I can't even remember his name. He's just the guy. And then they put him as GM, which was the worst mistake they ever made. Yeah, he did a number to that franchise. <laughs> why? Why do you? Why would you take Josh Allen? You have to give me some kind of reason why. I mean, I'm I not. Mean, if you look at the stats, they are pretty close, and uh, Watson doesn't have a lot to throw to. Diggs is killing it this year. He's become he gets open whenever he feels like it. Now you got Watson, who's just pulling it out of his rear end half the time, but still getting it done. Everybody, you know, Lamar Jackson was MVP last year. Look at how much he fell off. Like, you, if you can consistently do it, I, I will change my answer to Josh Allen. But I, I still need some proof. I think he needs to win a couple of playoff games. But, I mean, all right, so if, if you take away stats, you look at the t- three games that Baker Mayfield played in the most horrible conditions. And they won. But he managed the game well, didn't throw any interception or nothing. But you look at his stats for the games, you'd be like, oh, he played like crap. Not entirely true. Yeah. But this is why John – Yeah, this is why John said he would take Josh Allen. Young has B receivers, gets better every year, can run, and has 99 arm strength. Well, I guess we're comparing it to Madden, 99 arm strength. Uh, you know, he does have a great arm. Not going to lie, he has yeah. a great arm. I think he's – he can run, but he can't run like Watson. And then, yeah. well, he's, as far as he's got like a sneaky receivers, quickness. Yeah, I don't. He's got some really. He's got better receivers than Watson does. He has John Brown, Cole Beasley, right? Beasley still there? Or is no, he gone? I don't think so. And then, oh, well, he has uh, Diggs. So but Diggs I mean, has changed that whole team. Yeah, he's got – not to mention he's got a decent running back. Yeah, Singletary kind of fell off this year a little bit, but that Moss is all right. Zach Moss out of Utah? Yep. 
Yeah, I like him a lot. All right, well, that's enough talking about the Giants because they're not really that good. Cardinals lost it. Oh, yep, see, told you he was there. See, yeah, I know. Told you he was there. Yeah, he had a killer game actually a couple weeks ago. Yeah, I mean, you know, he's a great slot receiver. You look at Watson, what, what's he got? Will Fuller. That's about it. Not anymore. <laughs> yeah, not anymore. And then you don't even have Cobb, and Cobb's probably a C-rated wide receiver right now. I mean, I, that's a tough decision. I mean, I think it's all about your preference. Right. No. And I, I'm not dogging Allen at all. He oh, is a hell of a quarterback. There is no doubt about that. I think he's like, right. I, I just, I just got to see a little more, that's all. I think see he's the right up. fit. He's the right fit for Buffalo. They finally got a quarterback. Yeah, I mean, that's true. And he loves being at Buffalo. He yeah. loves Buffalo. There you go. Which so not I, a lot of people do. <laughs> no, it's cold man, it's cold. Yeah, very cold. Uh, a lot of snow. Uh, now, if I'm gonna have to take quarterback, you know, that's uh, past, present, whatever. Uh, it's gonna be Brett Favre every day of the week, twice on Sunday. That's my I guy. No, no, I I never knew either. <laughs> Uh, you know, but I don't know. It's I like Kyler Murray, even though they lost on uh, Sunday to New England, six and five now in a year. I was I had some hopes. I think they're not they're not there yet. They're not there yet. They will be in a couple of years, I think. Yeah, they got the pieces, but you know. yeah. And I see what you're saying though. But, I mean, Kyler, let's see what he did. Yeah, he threw – he didn't have a lot of yards thrown. He had one interception. Uh-oh. Let's see what John said here quick. See, I love chat. Oh, yeah, Brett Favre is my guy. 100 all day long. That's right. Yeah, I hated that man forever and ever and ever. And then he went to Minnesota and almost got us to the Super Bowl. I was like, well, gosh darn it. I kind of like him now. He's yeah. a beast. You know, I think for me – Brett Favre was just – he was fun to watch. He made plays that nobody else would do. He kind of set the bar well, for, you know, people coming up. And, I mean, he he had the most passing yards. He had the most touchdowns. Yeah, he's going to have the most interceptions. But that that was just how he played. He didn't care. Well, that's that, how Carson Wentz – he looked up to Brett Favre too. And look what he's doing. Like, you got to have a right. certain amount of poise still to do what Brett Favre did. Yeah. You can't just tuck it around and expect plays to happen. Like, no. I, there, was, there was a little bit of a sneaky genius to Brett Favre, even though he's throwing the interception. Well, yeah, the guy didn't know exactly what he wanted. He didn't, he didn't know what a you know, nickel-dime defense was for the first how many years. <laughs> oh, yeah. Then he didn't God just said Iron Man set in stone guaranteed. Yeah, for sure it is. I mean, mm. you know, that guy, there's nobody – when I seen him, when he went to Minnesota, and he was, what, age 40, 41, something like that? Yeah, I think he was 41, yeah. When he threw that ball to that Lewis in the end zone and beat the Niners, yeah, that was the most – that's the best ball I've ever seen still. Yeah. This, yeah. And he was off his back foot. That's what made him special. He could throw 90 miles an hour off his back foot, 65, 70 yards on a rope. Yeah, well, that's what makes Mahomes special, too. He oh. can throw it underhand 84 yards for some reason. Right, yeah. Just because. Yeah. <laughs> Give it a little little toss, and there it goes. Yep. All right, well, Cardinals just, I don't know what to talk about them. The Dolphins beat the Jets, obviously. Jets going to go Lawrence. We already know that. What game I was surprised with was the Falcons destroying the Raiders. I was blown by that. I mean, <laughs> 43 to 6. I I think it was a letdown because of last week when they played the Chiefs and they should have beat them. Well, ever, ever, that's that's what Carr is though. Carr is he yeah. looked good this year and everybody's kind of waiting on it. When when is he going to become the old Carr? Turn the ball over, makes bad bad decisions and then he just did it all in one game now. Three yeah. fumbles yeah. because he's holding the ball too long. And one interception. And one interception. Yeah. I mean, they were, like, to me, the most balanced offense and defense team. They had every layer to everything. They knew how to run. They knew how to pass. They have the big playability. They got uh, Jacobs, who can always run. Their defense is solid. 
and they just look like garbage. Like I have no idea what happened. All right, we're moving on. We got short time here. We got the Saints and the Broncos. Thirty-one to three. What? How many passes do you think uh, Kendall Hinton threw? Uh, I might have seen. He think I think he threw seven. He had more interceptions and completions. <laughs> No, he had more interceptions than completions, but he went one for nine, 13 yards, two interceptions. No. no. I mean, I mean you got to give the guy props, though. There was oh. no prep for him. There was no nothing. No. You're playing wide receiver in the practice squad. squad. You've played quarterback before. You're up, dude. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he handled it. Yeah. Not well, but he – I, mean, yeah, I give him props, though. That's why the Broncos wanted their coach to play, and uh, yeah. apparently the NFL is like, no, we're not doing it. Uh, all right, we're going to talk about the Buccaneers here with the Chiefs. Chiefs beat them by three. Now I have to ask you this question. I know how I feel about it. I'll tell you how I feel in a second. Do you think Tom Brady is a system quarterback? Yeah, but he brings the system with him. He's going to make he, – he went to Tampa, and they changed the system. He already called half the plays, more than half the plays. They already admitted it. It's whatever Tom wants to run. That's what we run. The only part that is different is he has – he the progression is from deep to short. In New England, it was short to deep. Right. So that's yeah, the only difference. I just don't know. He's not having a bad year. He's no. Not. But he's ha- he has 11 interceptions. He's got, what, 28 touchdowns or so No. I mean, he's not yeah, having he's a still year. solid year. But do you, you think he comes back next year? Do you think he will be a Buccaneer next year? It's only a one-year yes. contract. Tom Brady's all about preparation, and this year was cut short by all that. All of a sudden, you're adding Antonio Brown yeah. in the middle of the season. Like, he's all about doing his homework, preparing the best he can. And with this COVID thing, he hasn't got to do that as well as he did in the past. Right. So I think right. he comes yeah. back and gives it another shot. They build some chemistry, and they're a force to be reckoned with. I don't think Bruce Arians likes him. I don't think so either. <laughs> I don't think so. It doesn't seem that way. No. Because, I mean, he's called them out how many times? If you look at Patrick Mahomes, I mean, 462 yards, three touchdown passes. Had the most passing yards in the first half in history. He just makes it look so easy. It's oh. Crazy. Hey, even Travis Kelsey getting in there, he was 0 for 1. How about them apples? Yeah, well. Not everybody can be Mahomes, I guess. Oh, I wonder if John's still here. John, you still here? San Francisco knocked off the LA Rams 23 to 20. I was shocked. You like Nick Mullins just tossed the ball all over you. He did throw one interception. Oh, Goff had a horrible game, 198. Yeah, he was. That's two games in a row. He's not been oh, good. Two interceptions. I don't know. I don't now, that know. is a system quarterback for sure. Which one? Golf? Golf. Yeah. yeah. They have built that all around him. There's He can't go anywhere else and be half as successful right now. Uh, yeah, I don't – to me, he's, he's not that great of a quarterback to me. I mean, he makes some plays, but I just – I don't know. I I don't yeah. think they're that, that good of a team right now, the Rams. I think Seattle – They have a great secondary is what they have. They do. They do. That is for sure. I and think, then they got uh, Donald putting pressure on it too. So Oh, that guy's the best defensive tackle in the NFL, and he will be for the next six, seven years. The guy's, I think he's, like, going to be the best ever. Like, that man can take on a triple team and still get a sack. Right. I mean, I liked uh, John Randall. I thought John Randall. Oh, was yeah, I loved team. him. Yeah. Uh, uh, Gilbert Brown was one of the good ones. Warren, Warren Sapp. Sapp. Yep, Warren Sapp was another good one. So there's been some yeah, really think, good ones, but I think I think Donald's Donald, the best. Oh yeah, oh, absolutely, without a doubt. And you know he's not real big. Like I'm not saying he's he's not a Gilbert Brown big. You know no, he's, he's not uh, the, the traditional defensive no, tackle size. He's, but he still beats a triple team. Oh, he's built like a a tank. The yeah. guy's just a stud. Now I want to talk about the uh, Mitchell Trubisky and the Chicago Bears travel to Lambeau and get their brain stomped in 41 to 25 Mitchell uh 
three touchdowns, two interceptions, throwing them interceptions again. I think the biggest thing for me with this game was, I don't know if you watched it or not, but uh, the Green Bay running uh, defense on the uh, with the rush, they cannot stop the run. No, that's been proven all year. I mean, you look at the Lions game, you look at the second game with the Vikings, you look at this game with the Bears, another 100-yard mm-hmm. game for another running back, and it's I think it's their offense that puts up so much points and they get the teams down that that's they when they play run. good. Yeah. yeah, because then it looks – I think their defense is not as good as advertised because of that fact. Yeah. So no, it's the same with like Seattle. Seattle's pass defense is so bad, but they can yeah. just they got a better offense that it's almost sometimes overlooked. I thought you know Rodgers had another another great game, four touchdown passes, not a lot of yards, but they had the running game going. Aaron Jones ninety yards and Jamal Williams seventy three. Even Aaron Rodgers with twelve yards. So they had uh they had some things clicking and. The nice thing was uh, Aaron Rodgers was throwing the ball to a lot of different people, which is uh, a good sign for the – and one last thing before we get to the uh, safe word of the day. No, oh, there is no safe word of the day. There's no football on tonight. Oh. Well, I we'll still got some oh. picks. You got some picks? Yeah, you got I got a pick tonight still. Who's playing tonight? I got some college basketball action happening. Okay. Well, I'm not picking on that because, you know. But the last thing I want to say about Green Bay before we sign off, get with the pie, man. Um, finally, Preston uh, Preston Smith finally showed up. Yeah. Finally showed up. Yeah, yeah he was, he was uh, killing it last year. He just kind of fell off this year. Yeah, I don't know what the deal was. But you know, the thing about one more thing I want to say though, the thing about Trubisky, I think he tried too hard to get his starting job back. I think he put too much yeah. pressure on himself, tried to make throws that he doesn't usually make, and he had to stick to his game. I mean, I don't think they come out with the win in that game, anyways, but just no. it would have been a lot closer. I think Mitchell Trubisky is going to go somewhere else, possibly Minnesota. I don't know, but he's going to he's going to go somewhere else, and he's going to be decent. I just yeah, I, 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 don't, like I said I don't think Chicago is the right place for him. No, I don't think Chicago's the right place for many. <laughs> no, it's not. Well, it's that time of day that you need a slice of pie. Here is the pie, man. All right, so we got an early blue bloods in college basketball. We got Kansas and Kentucky. Now, Kentucky is very much known for being the, the one and done team. They're going to have a lot of freshmen. They're very young. They did get beat by Richmond, who was unranked last uh, a couple days ago. But I'm, I believe Kansas is going to pull this one out. It's a three-and-a-half-point three and spread. I think uh, Kentucky can't shoot the three, and I think Kansas is just way more uh, – got more experience. And Coach Calipari is known for getting better as the year goes. So I don't think it's time for Kentucky yet, but maybe a matchup later in this year. That might be a different story. But I got uh, Kansas minus three-and-a-half. That's your luck. Mm-hmm. That's how you eat today oh look at that stuff i love it that's a great seg- segment right there look forward to the pie man tomorrow when the steelers and the ravens get together not a lot of people playing in that game but hey that's all right well mike we'll see you tomorrow yes, hopefully sir. a little earlier 1 30 i'll be here you <laughs> let me know when i will be here that's right and hopefully we can uh, eat some more pie tomorrow maybe have a little uh, safe word of the day as well. Yeah, I do want to say quick though about that. Real quick. I had, uh, Eagles by Eagles by six and a half. Who throws a who goes for yeah, a two point conversion down by fifteen points and after a Hail Mary lucky catch and goes for it by two when you ain't gonna win with fifteen uh, seconds left. Direct direct yeah. people's uh betting and direct, direct people's fantasy. They must have heard me. They must Absolutely. have heard me. They don't they don't care. They don't care. Who goes for two with fifteen seconds left? Come on. You ain't going to win. Damn it. Come Let on. them have it. Let them have it, Mike. No kidding. No kidding. All right. Well, you have a great rest of your day. You and too, bud. We'll talk to you tomorrow. And everybody out there, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Um, Yeah, I'll do a show tomorrow because it's uh, Top 25 College Football Day tomorrow. So I'll do a show in the morning, about 8, 30, 9 o'clock, my time, and then we'll do a SM, SNM show later on in the day. All right. 
All right, we'll catch you guys later. Have a great day. Peace, I'm out.